how do the concepts of partial pressure and movements of gases in and out of water affect oxygen and carbon dioxide transport, and what are some of the adaptations that animals use to deal with these problems? Effective diffusion distances in an animal are about 0.5 millimeters, or 500 microns. In other words, if we had an animal that was about one millimeter thick, or 1,000 microns, then diffusion alone would be sufficient to move oxygen and carbon dioxide out. However, as animals get bigger, that's no longer possible. For typical metabolic rates of animals, once they get about 0.5 millimeters away from the oxygen at the surface, they can't get enough oxygen to function. They have to rely on bulk flow to aid diffusion. Here's the typical pattern, whether we're talking about water or air. We have bulk flow, in other words, currents. So with bulk flow, oxygen is going to move much faster. At the surface of the animal, there will be epithelial tissue, a basement membrane. Oxygen going in has to cross, get to a capillary if it's an animal with a circulatory system, and move in. The path length, you can predict, will need to be less than 0.5 millimeters or less than 500 microns. If it is longer than that, there won't be efficient movement of oxygen. And then if we look at where that oxygen is delivered in the animal, so here's another capillary with oxygen coming from, say, a heart, and there are cells outside it that oxygen has to diffuse out and into the individual cells. Again, a path length that's got to be less than 0.5 millimeters, 500 microns. When animals want to maximize the uptake of oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide, what they need to do is minimize two path lengths. what you see in lots and lots of animals is thin epithelial layers, capillaries that are very close to the epithelial layer and abundant in that epithelial layer. And in typical animals, their capillaries are relatively close to cells. So for mammals and birds, the maximum path length is often less than 100 microns. A typical cell is only about five cells or so away from a source of oxygen, and similarly, it's able to get rid of its carbon dioxide over relatively short distances. So these path lengths are minimized. We have bulk flow from the water or the air passing the gill or the lung surface. Diffusion is the only way to get oxygen across the epithelial layer extracellular spaces and into the capillary. And then bulk flow will take it pumping through a heart to capillaries of the tissues. Again, we want to minimize the path length in a metabolically active animal between capillaries and the cells. As you might predict in mammals, and inc including humans, if a particular area of tissue has insufficient capillaries, then a series of messenger molecules are secreted that cause additional capillary growth to keep these path lengths short. What are some of the adaptations? First of these are pumps of circulatory fluid. It could be blood, as it is in mammals and birds, or it could be extracellular fluid. Pumps move the circulatory fluid, and we'll talk about how later. They may also use pumps to move air or water. Think of fish with gills pumping water through the gills, or your lungs pumping air in and out. This, just pumps alone, allows animals to be up to several millimeters in diameter. But it's not enough to overcome the problems of limited oxygen for an animal as big as we are. For that, respiratory pigments, which is unfortunately what they're usually called, but what we really mean is oxygen binding proteins. The most common of those by far is hemoglobin. Each hemoglobin molecule has a heme group that at its center has an iron, and that iron can bind an oxygen, and actually deoxygenated hemoglobin can also bind carbon dioxide. The affinity is a little lower. Our hemoglobin is a tetramer. 
it'll bind four oxygens. And the affinity actually changes depending upon how many oxygens are bound. So when four oxygens are bound, the protein itself changes shape and holds those oxygens a little tighter. Once one oxygen is gone, that changes the shape of that particular hemoglobin, which in turn changes the shape of the neighbors and allows the others to be released more easily. Respiratory pigments increase the oxygen capacity, the concentration of oxygen in blood or hemolymph by a factor of 10 to 100 times. The third way animals increase their oxygen is by increasing from small surface area of a lung or gill to a large surface area that can simply be a surface area such as that, but often animals also do abundant indentations or pockets. In order to move oxygen efficiently to tissues, we need short path lengths, effective pumps that bring fresh oxygen to the surface of the lung or the gill, and pumps that move circulatory fluid, hemolymph, or blood rapidly through the animal, short path lengths from the capillaries to cells, and high surface areas, blood that contains high numbers of respiratory pigments. High surface area also includes capillaries in the tissues, capillaries that are very far from many of the cells, or we can have capillaries that have many branches that result in all cells being relatively close to a particular capillary.